So we're in chapter 11, section seven. Uh, we're gonna be talking about aluminum. This is in your chemistry book. Aluminum is a very important uh, metal because it composes up to 7.5% of the Earth's crust. It's the third most abundant element and the most abundant metal in the Earth. Test question, what is the most abundant metal in the Earth? Aluminum. Of course, oxygen is the, the number one element and uh, silicon's number two and aluminum number three. <clears throat> A large portion of it occurs in clays. It's very difficult to extract it from the earth from clay, um, but it also occurs in silicates and bauxite. Um, bauxite factories, whenever you hear that, oh, this factory is a bauxite, you think, well, what is bauxite? Well, now you know it's hydrogen aluminum. And here you see um, basically the symbol for it, um, for bauxite is uh, aluminum, um, Al2O3 times um, whatever uh, with water. But anyway, this is what is called bauxite here. And uh, it's by far the most important aluminum ore. So bauxite. Preparation. <clears throat> aluminum is aluminum oxide, alumina. See how we basically with um, the A at the end. Um, it's a, a very stable compound. It's not easily decomposed. Um, so it's not really practical um, to get it out because it has to be done electrolytically using a lot of electricity to get it out, in fact, in that point, or it's just hard to get out of the molten, mainly because you, they have to heat it up at a very high temperatures. In fact, uh, here it says aluminum must be molten before it can be electrolyzed and its melting point is very high a melting point of 2,045 degrees centigrade and um, 3,713 degrees centigrade. Those are extremely high temperatures. <clears throat> so it's very high to get that high, of a, that's hard to get that high of a temperature to be able to get the um, aluminum out uh, of um, the ore. In 1886, Charles Hall, and Paul Herolt, um, uh, Heru, you would actually call his name uh, Heru, it's a French type name, independently found that um, aluminum oxide is soluble in a molten material called cryolite. Cryolite has sodium, aluminum, and fluoride. So here's the formula, Na3AlF6. And so um, in order to, to um, get it out, they found that if they could take the aluminum and um, in this molten mineral, it will reduce the temperature. So they won't have to put the temperature up to 2,045 degrees centigrade. <clears throat> um, this fact makes electrolysis much more practical because cryolite has a much lower melting point than alumina, which is at 96, 960 degrees instead of um, 2,400 or 2,045 degrees, okay? So, so now they could possibly um, uh, take aluminum, um, get alumin, aluminum product out of the, the ore a little easier. So, so this is important just to remember this process. So to produce metal bauxite is first crushed and then the pure aluminum oxide is extracted using this concentrated aqueous sodium hyd hydroxide. And this is called um, the hall haru -Haru process. hall haru process. The oxide is then mixed with molten synthetic cryolite and the electrolysis of the molten cryolite um, uh, aluminum mixture is carried out at approximately a thousand degrees instead of 2,400 degrees. So here we have um, the equation here <clears throat> for you see the um, alumina here and then the electric current and cryolite. And now that the temperature doesn't have to be and then you get um, pure aluminum and oxygen as a byproduct. So that's pretty important. So let's Here's a picture 
of the aluminum manufacturing here. And you see how um, they have a carbon anode and a, um, two of them in between. They have this elect, um, electrolysis here and the carbon cathode. And you see how the aluminum, the gas, is the gas and the hot burn, how it comes in, comes in the top here. And so very unique, aluminum manufacturing. So some properties, let's go on to, it says here, well, um, le, um, figure 1115 here is a picture of molten aluminum is denser than cryolite and is drained off at the bottom. So that's where the molten aluminum comes from the bottom. Because of the large amounts of electrical power required in electrolysis, the energy consumed in the production of one ton of aluminum is about five times that consumed in the production of one ton of iron. That's kind of important to know because it, you know you, the power to bring forth one ton of iron um, and then aluminum is, takes five times amount that energy to do that. However, let's see what the however says. However, recycling aluminum costs only about 5% as it does to produce it from bauxite. So now we recycle a lot of aluminum. Each year, over 2 million tons of aluminum are produced in the United States, and hopefully a lot of the, that are um, recycled. So onto its properties. Aluminum is this silvery metal with a very low density, making it very light. Um, it's ductile, it's malleable, making it that uh, a metal that can be used and molded into shapes. Um, one of the basic things produced by aluminum are aluminum cans. So you can just take a, a, a can and say, oh, this aluminum can, how lightweight the can is. It's a pure metal. <clears throat> when it's a pure metal, it's very soft and weak, but it's also strengthened by alloys as they melt copper and magnesium to mix with it to make it stronger. Aluminum reacts uh, with atmospheric oxygen, making it kind of tough, this adherent film on the top of aluminum, so that aluminum does not rust like iron. So, um, in fact, <clears throat> aluminum, after it develops this, this film, it is, um, it is very hard um, to corrode at all, you know, so it, it prevents corrosive, the corrosiveness and so aluminum can last a long time. And it's used because of low density. It can be used in um, building trims, buildings, auto parts, aircraft, spacecraft. Um, with the alloy of mixing magnesium and copper and silicon and lithium, uh, it produces a lot of different types of metal. And it's two thirds less conductive than copper, but, huh, Seems like we use aluminum more than copper. Why would we use aluminum more than copper? Well, because um, aluminum, aluminum is set so lighter, so much lighter than copper, that it actually conducts two times the current as, as copper does. So if you were to take copper and use copper wiring, um, would be fine, but aluminum could be used, uh, be used because it actually conducts uh, um, twice as much, even though, um, even though it's um, less, two thirds less conductive, it ends up being um, more practical using aluminum in a lot of cases. But with um, aluminum wiring, you have to be very, um, um, you know, um, I should say, you know, very spectacal about certain things with it, looking at it, um, because um, aluminum wiring, if it d is not um, coated right with the right coat, it can be, be very dangerous and be a fire hazard. So, um, in fact, aluminum wiring, you have to check it quite often to make sure that it's um, not um, falling apart in any way or deteriorating with the coat on it because it could definitely could be a fire hazard more than copper wiring. <clears throat> so, aluminum alloyed with iron, and cobalt and nickel. Um, you can put a lot of different metals and melt them uh, as alloys with aluminum to make them stronger and have different, different, um, you know, specified um, different characteristics. So in fact, aluminum alloyed with iron 
um, cobalt and nickel forms an ally called alnico. And alnico is what we use um, to make some types of magnets. So, and a ceramic-like compound of aluminum, aluminum and titanium is used in like jet engines and car turbochargers and other item and items that may have to um, withstand very high temperatures and very high stresses. So other aluminum ceramics are being evaluated as for transparent armor, such as for windows of military vehicles. So aluminum is used in quite a few different things. <clears throat> the re now the reaction of aluminum with oxygen so um, is but basically is very exothermic. And in fact, used it, they call it the thermite process. So when we say exothermic, it means that it produces a, a lot of energy and a lot of heat, right? <clears throat> and so this mixture of aluminum um, powder and iron and um, oxide is so exothermic that the molten iron um, is produced. It makes the iron um, basically melt because it is so exothermic. Here's the equation here for it produced with iron oxide with aluminum combined. And as it's com combined, it produces the iron and then the aluminum oxide plus tons of heat. So tons of energy. <clears throat> In fact, they use it for things like welding, steel rails because of it, the, the heat in the midst of it. Aluminum dissolves in either acid or bases. So <clears throat> that's another thing we need to consider. Um, and here's the equations for the dissolving in the acid or base. <clears throat> here, here we have aluminum and we have hydrochloric acid here. And see how it um, basically dissolves and you get aluminum uh, chloride plus hydrogen gas. So this um, dissolving produces a, a huge reaction with the um, hydrogen gas, right? And then that, that's in, a, in an acid. Then in a base here, of course, when you have OH, that's your, our base is um, hydrogen, um, hydrogen oxide here. And so we have aluminum plus two sodium hydroxide and uh, water. And it's basically gonna pr produce a lot of hydrogen gas too. So these two reactions um, in acid or bases you can see can cause a lot of energy to happen. In fact, this um, reaction is actually used in some products like drain, cleaning um, drains. And um, the heat and hydrogen gas produce help break up the clogs in the drain. And the strong base, when you have the strong base, NaOH with a strong base with sodium hydroxide helps dissolve grease and decompose hair in the clog as for plumbing. Oven cleaners also contain it, <clears throat> this base of uh, sodium hydroxide with aluminum. Therefore, their labels caution the user against using product on anything aluminum. Because if you take this, <clears throat> if you're using this with aluminum, then of course the aluminum, of course, is going to react and actually melt. So say you have aluminum in your stove, you won't want to make sure that your oven cleaner um, does, is not a strong base because it would actually um, um, cause corrosion in the oven. So, <clears throat> so anyway, that's for aluminum. Let's go on to um, your table 11, six here. And this is the reduction processes, which are how we get these metals um, out of their um, ores. How do we get them out of the earth and how do we use them? And so here it tells of the different metals. They have alkali and alkaline earth metals. We went over those. Um, the ore or source can be in seawater. Of course, magnesium, lots of magnesium is in seawater. And salt beds, of course, sodium is in salt beds. Those are alkaline and uh, earth metals and, and calcium too. And so in order to do this, the reduction process is actually electrolysis, you know, electric electrolysis of molten chlorides. And so they put chlorine in the midst of this, react it, um, whether they're reacting it um, with M, which is whatever metal they have, you know, whether it be um, sodium or potassium or whatever it is, this electrolysis uh, process happens. So basically putting electric um, electrolysis through is how we get um, 
the ore to come out, considering if we have salt, or potassium, or calcium, or magnesium, all of these. Then we have iron, and if we have hematite, which is 90% of the iron that we have, is, is Fe2O, um, ferrous oxide here. And to do that, of course, we do that in that blast furnace with, um, <clears throat> with um, carbon, which is coke, right? They call it coke in the midst with um, carbon um, CO, carbon monoxide. So anyway, in the midst of this, we take carbon, they use carbon to get through to get this um, iron out of the ore. Now copper, um, calcoprite here is copper. Whenever you have Cu, that's the, the atomic number or symbol for copper. Um, and of course, here we have the preliminary treatment to convert ore to copper. Um, uh, copper sulfide, and it's how basically roasting. When you ever think of roasting, I always think of copper, you know, roasting copper um, sulfide in the air. So here we have cop copper um, sulfide, copper sulfide right here with oxygen at high temperatures, and then you're going to get copper plus um, <clears throat> SO2, which is um, sulfate, a sulfate here in the midst, sulfur. So you're going to get the sulfur um, sulfide vape coming out. So that's copper. Aluminum now with the bauxite. Remember, that's where we get almost all of our aluminum from. Again, they're going to use, like we did before, with the alkaline metals, electrolysis in this molten cryolite to bring the temperature down. You think 1,000 degrees is a high temperature. If we didn't have the cryolite, it would be 2,045 degrees. That would be very high temperatures. <clears throat> so here we have basically the aluminum oxide put in cryolite and electrolysis, all of this in this um, factory, this huge factory where they do it in, in this furnace. And we have aluminum, uh, comes out with aluminum and oxygen. So so here's good, this is a good table to know, probably um, especially on um, test questions. So so let's go on. There's gonna We're going to go over a few other important metals. Um, and just kind of uh, skim through them, actually, in this point. Um, but there's some things we need to know about them. Of course, lead. <clears throat> lead um, is used in car and truck batteries, and also um, because it's very dense and has a very low um, uh, melting point, it's very easy to cast lead and to make things that are lead. Um, it is also corrosive resistance. It doesn't rust, right? And lead is a low cost. Usually it doesn't cost so much. Um, it's, it's denseness makes it used um, in weights. So you can say, um, basically, you're as heavy as lead. That means you're pretty heavy. And lead weights, your lifting weights are probably lead because lead is very dense. It's also um, used for radiation shields. So it shields radiation. Like if you're going to have x-rays, they'll come and put this big lead apron on you to protect you from radiation. So it does well because of its density. Um, and also in small arms ammunition. So once they used, to, once they used it in paint and they thought lead worked very well in paint, so they painted everything with um, leaded paint. And then they found out that when the paint would start peeling and maybe um, kids would start, you know, eating the paint, the paint would become very, very toxic. So they decided not to put lead in paint because um, the paint chips could actually um, hurt or even be lethal to, to a lot of um, children. So the lead paint. So let's go on to titanium. Titanium. <clears throat> is a strong, lightweight, heat-resistant metal. They use it in helicopters and airplanes and spacecraft. Unlike aluminum, it retains its strength at very, very high temperatures. In fact, titanium, a lot of people think titanium is the strongest of metals. Um, here's where it says, the skin of Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, officially the world's fastest jet aircraft, was made of titanium. Um, and this titanium alloy to, alloys to withstand the high temperatures <clears throat> produced by the drag at high speeds. So titanium is, you know, that metal that wherever there's a lot of stress and a lot of heat, titanium does well. So, and on to uranium. 
So let's talk about uranium. What do you think about when you think about uranium? Of course, you, you think about um, nuclear power plants. And each year, roughly 50,000 tons of uranium are produced worldwide and the primary use as a fuel in nuclear power plants. A kilogram of uranium um, is, is a cube that's less than 1.5 inches on a side. That's small and can produce the energy of 500,000 pounds of coal or 39,400 gallons of gasoline. So that tiny uranium can produce a, a lot of power, very powerful. However, uranium also has a number of non-nuclear uses. So what else is it used for? Well, <clears throat> as you see in this picture, um, uranium is, is two times denser than even lead. And so um, it's used as counter rates and bal balancing heavy mechanisms and commercial airlines. It's very strong, um, uh, heat resistant. So it's, it's used in um, those, the case hardening of the uranium alloy or whatever. Let's see, it says uranium is very strong. Heat treated case hardening uranium is alloy. <clears throat> as hard and tough as the finest steel. So uranium can become very, very tough. Um, because of its combination of strength and density, uranium makes excellent protective armor for military tanks. So, and it can be used for armor piercing projectiles as well. So here we have uranium tanks. <clears throat> so let's go on and look at the questions. Okay, give the formulas for aluminum, alumina, and of course we have that formula. Let's look back at that formula real quick. So, uh, let's go back to the, so I'm gonna show you, you can see. Right here, here we have Al2O3. So this is the formula for alumina. AlO3. Um, for bauxite. So it's asking, asking for bauxite. Let's go back to see the formula for um, bauxite. Oh, right here. Bauxite is a hydrogen aluminum. Here we go. Al2O3, the same way, plus how much water with um, NH2O, bauxite. So that would be that. And now they're asking for cryolite. Let's look at what cryolite down here is. Cryolite is um, <clears throat> the sodium with aluminum and fluoride in it. And that makes the heating the heating, they don't have to heat, heat it as high of temperature to get it out of the ore. Sodium-3 and AlF-6. Cryolite makes electrolysis of the aluminum oxide more practical because it has a lower melting point. Okay, so let's go back to our questions. Okay, it says it write the balanced equation for the thermite reaction. <clears throat> I already went over that one. So you have basically, you know, let's look at it real quick so you can see it. Right here. This, this one here at the bottom. Um, with iron, ferrous um, oxide with um, aluminum with iron there. And then um, the, basically the oxygen and the uh, aluminum, the, the oxygen combines the aluminum and it produces a lot of heat. Let's just say that. So, uh, why should basic solutions um, like NaOH not be placed in aluminum containers? Because aluminum, aluminum, sorry about that, aluminum dissolves in acids or bases. And so it will corrode in the midst of it. Actually, causes a big reaction. So you never use aluminum with acids and bases. Number five, name one use for each of the following elements. Lead is used what? 
let's say lead is used in radiation shields, like, the, and then you go to the dentist and have x-rays and lead weights. So um, titanium is used for the fastest jet. Remember, titanium is very strong. Uh, and uranium is used in nuclear power plants. So let's, let's quit at that point. I think you got enough information. So um, we'll go on to section eight in just a little bit.